Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Friday. It is April 30th. Alicia is in for Stephanie this morning. Good to have you here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. We've been up all morning. We have been and we have a lot of rain to talk about yesterday right here on GMS and I we were talking about the danger of snakes. Apparently they will be out in droves with all the heavy rain we've had around here. They are on the move because things are so wet, but they're also yeah. looking for frogs, which is apparently a filet mignon to a snake. Uh, both are gross. Yeah. And now we're hearing about another <laughs> potential problem, and this could be something to be on the lookout for when it comes to our furry friends. Yeah, usually when we walk our dogs, I don't know, you kind of let them run them around, but mm -hmm. now we have to be extra vigilant because of mushroom poisoning. So be wary of that if you're walking your dogs. So the recent rainy weather has led to an increase of mushrooms on the ground, and heavy rains usually leave Fido feeling cooped up inside the house and ready for a long walk. So the, the thing about this is the mushroom poisoning, right? So this happens as a result of ingesting these toxic mushrooms, which is a common hazard for dogs because of the amount of time they spend outdoors or specifically in those wooded areas. All right, so here are some of the symptoms of poisoning and they differ depending on the type of mushroom ingested and can also vary by dog. Vomiting diarrhea, if they have any pain in their abdomen, their tummy, a weakness also is one. Lethargy, yellowing of the skin, uncoordinated movements, excessive drooling. Oh my gosh, and these are worse, seizures, and I think the most serious one, a coma. So oh we definitely want to be vigilant when we walk our pets or even just, you know, let them out in the yard. So they say if, you're, if your dog accidentally gets, you know, really interested in mushroom, actually ingest part of when they said keep part of it, to take to the vet and immediately get to the vet so that they can deal with the situation. But they're going to want to see what kind of species of mushroom your dog ate. That is very interesting. And they're not poisonous to us, right? So just for the dog. Some of Listen. these are indeed Well, I'm poisonous. just saying like, right, I'm not going to ingest it, right, right, of course, right. but touch it. Right. You know? I don't think that's a problem. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a look at today's 9 at 9. More than 40 people were killed in a stampede in northern Israel. Authorities say thousands of people were at a popular religious festival when something created a panic and people started trying to escape. And the U.S. has started withdrawing troops from Afghanistan, but Al-Qaeda is still vowing a, quote, war on all fronts. The group says it's planning a comeback by partnering once again with the Taliban. A shipment of aid from the U.S. has arrived in India as the coronavirus crisis there continues to spiral out of control. The situation is so dire that President Joe Biden now says he intends to help India by sharing the U.S. supply of COVID-19 vaccines. San Antonio police say they will not release body cam video from two incidents where officers shot and killed someone. The department cited a clause in their body worn camera release policy that allows them to withhold footage if a call involved domestic violence. The Justice Department reporting moving forward with plans to charge Derek Chauvin and three other former Minneapolis police officers with federal civil rights violations in connection with the death of George Floyd. President Joe Biden will be in Philadelphia today. He'll speak outside the 30th Street Station to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Amtrak. Police in California arrested and charged five people with the February shooting and robbery of Lady Gaga's dog walker. Two of Gaga's French Bulldogs were stolen. Disneyland and California Adventure will reopen today for the first time in over a year. Only in-state visitors are allowed and people won't be able to share hugs or handshakes with any of the park's characters. The NFL draft continues tonight with the second and third rounds. Last night, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected Clemson quarterback Trevor Lawrence for the number one overall pick. You can watch the draft starting at 6 p.m. right here on KSAT 12. And that's today's 9 at 9. 902 right now. It's pretty warm out there. We've been talking about rainfall chances all morning log on the early edition of GMSA. Yeah, in the morning the roads were wet and then right now it looks cloudy, yep. but we know it's going to be very busy this weekend. Very right, dark out there. Could be. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I feel kind of silly about this, but I just realized today is the last day of April and uh, it looks like we're going to end it on, on a rainy note. Uh, we started off the month dry, but uh, we're ending uh, with showers and storms and pretty good shot at some rain, especially as we're going to tomorrow. So let's look at the radar real quick. I'll show you where the rain is right now, stretching from Gonzales to Nixon. We've got some heavier rain just south of Howitzville. 
around Cuero. Some lightning strikes showing up there, so we know the rain's coming down at a pretty good clip. Victoria has received quite a bit of rain this morning, and this is the area that we expect the heaviest rain today. There is some new development, though, along I-37 down towards Pleasanton. We also have some showers out west near Del Rio. Those are fairly light. Our upper level low still off to the west in a favorable position for us to receive rainfall. 40% chance today showers and storms. It won't rain all day, but there will be some downpours here and there, some of which could contain some heavy rain. As we get into the weekend, look for about an 80% chance of rain coming up tomorrow. 73 does clear out on Sunday. If you're making plans, Sunday is probably the better day. It does warm up quite a bit too. 88 degrees. We're going to detail that forecast and look at to where we'll see some of those heavier showers and storms and talk about the flash flood watch coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Justin, let's check the roads with Transguide. I-35 at Evans Road. The uh, interstate and the frontage road are dry out there, but of course, it's going to be a game changer overnight into tomorrow. Be thinking about those flood prone areas or just stay out the streets altogether, at least for the first half of the weekend. More on that to come. And top stories we're following today. Crime Stoppers is hoping you can help them track down the people who shot and killed a 17 year old boy in Leon Valley. That's right. Anyone with information could get up to $5,000 cash. Police say back on April 19th, people in a medium to dark colored SUV pulled up next to a vehicle. Eric Torres was in and started shooting. This was over on Hebner between Bandera and Evers. Investigators believe another red sedan similar to the one Torres was in was possibly involved in a road rage incident with the suspect's vehicle before the shooting. So if you know anything that could help police, you're asked to call 210-224-STOP. We have an update on a story we brought to you this morning on the early edition of GMSA. A 74-year-old man missing from Castle Hills has been found and is safe. Police had issued a silver alert for Mark Savrod because they believed he posed a threat to his own health and safety. His wife told KSAT he was found this morning in Bernie. The silver alert has been discontinued. Good news there. Well, you can now get a COVID-19 vaccine anytime at the Alamo Dome here in San Antonio without an appointment. Starting today, anyone 16 and older can stop by and get a shot. The Alamo Dome vaccine distribution site is open Tuesdays through Saturdays from 9 a.m to 6.30 p.m. This change comes as the site experiences more and more people not showing up to their appointment to their appointment. So far, more than 839,000 people in Bear County have received at least one shot. And in your morning headlines, a suspect steals a police cruiser and leads officers on a chase through a neighborhood. And a bear does more than just try to get out the porridge at a Florida home. David Sears is here. Good morning, David. Apparently, when you have a pool, the whole neighborhood just figures they can just show up. That happens sometimes. Yeah, so just come on over. Maybe not. Explain that to you in just a second. But first, let's start in Wisconsin. You're watching Jonathan Bishop getting arrested. He allegedly broke into a home. Now, watch the officer over here by the red car. There's an officer right in there. Watch what happens when he notices his car is backing up. He comes right at it, and here go, there goes the car. You see all the evidence down there at the bottom falling off the hood? Yeah, the cops put the suspect in cuffs and then they put him in the back seat of that car. But that suspect managed to crawl through a little window between the back seat and the front seat and then take off with the cruiser. Not sure how he got his hands on the steering wheel since they were in cuffs. He is driving through a neighborhood, eventually ditches the car, runs off, but the officers finally found him. He was hiding in somebody's attic. Bishop is not is now waiting on a court appearance. By the way, the cruiser destroyed in the Jays. All right, now you're looking at apartment fire. This is the sixth floor of an apartment building. We are in New York City. The fire raged an eight year old Mahogany McBride got separated from her aunt. Her aunt ended up on the hallway. Mahogany only had one way out and that was the balcony. The flames got so hot she had to make a life or death decision. She decided to jump from the sixth floor that's 60 feet up. She managed to survive. Six stories. How? It's thank God that she's alive. She landed on the dirt. I think she was aware enough to, to aim for the dirt and not the pavement. Yeah, you can see Mahogany surrounded by strangers, friends, making sure she was going to survive, which she did. She was taken to the hospital, both legs shattered, but still alive to talk about it, even though she will have a long recovery now. All right, let's take it to Scotts Valley, California. Early this week, that's a mountain lion just walking up on the deck of this home, peering through the window. 
Like, what are they watching on TV? Maybe they're watching The Lion King, or maybe they're watching another animal-type movie. Who knows? But then the guy bangs on the window to run it off. The owner of the house figured out that the mountain lion was actually checking out their cat inside, lying in front of the wood stove. Hmm. You think banging on the window worked? I don't know. Mountain lion might be back. All right, it feels like we just barely got started, but finally another visitor making himself at home. Take it to Naples, Florida. This is a hole in the screen that surrounds a pool. How did it get there, you ask? Well, it got there because of uh, this guy right here. Yep, apparently that big bear has been hanging out in Karen Bachrath's backyard and then decided one day, oh, that pool looks inviting, so why not? He busted a hole through the screen and tried it out, kind of like the perfect porridge. Felt just right. One day, Karen came outside, and there he was, hanging out in the pool. He's very sneaky. I mean, I don't see him unless I hear the water moving or I see a ripple across it. Ooh, now Karen says every now and then when she is outside working or relaxing in the backyard, the bear is going to show up, but she says he's starting to get a little too close <laughs> for comfort. Oh, what? So wow. I'd say he's big enough to stay and maybe yeah. put, a, put a few <laughs> pool noodles out there just for his hey. enjoyment. <laughs> now, the bear was so courteous about busting through that screen. If you notice, he comes and goes through the same hole. Well, that's good. Okay. Make another hole. So yeah. he's like, I got one hole. I don't need I didn't tear up the screen anymore. So very polite know. bear. Very nice. Thank goodness. That's good. Otherwise, so, thank yeah. you, Dave. <laughs> right now we are at 909, about 68 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A World War II and Korean War veteran is recovering after falling from his truck and breaking his hip. How the rehab team at Methodist Hospital took a break from their busy schedules to give him a touching send-off. Things took a surprising turn at the NFL draft last night when the Cowboys traded their pick with their division rival Philadelphia Eagles. David and RJ break down what happened later in the newscast. All right, and a serial thief accused of stealing thousands is back at it again, but still faces no criminal charges. Dylan Collier explains why in the latest Defenders investigation. As we go to break, let's check stocks right now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 0.42% or 141 points. Welcome back. It's 913. He racked up theft charges in three years, but after getting out of jail, he has struck again. Law enforcement records show Carlos Elizondo has been able to line up a new group of victims, yet somehow has avoided being rearrested. Dylan Collier explains in this Defenders report. When this corner house was passed down to his disabled mother last year, Army veteran Tristan Seymour quickly realized a new fence would be a necessity. We started having a lot of issues with my dogs wanting to jump our old chain link fence. After contacting a few companies in August, Seymour settled on the one that got back to him right away, Alamo Fence Co. Its owner, Renee Elizondo, provided Seymour an estimate for an eight-foot privacy fence that came in at just under $6,500. All of this is exposed, you know. But unbeknownst to Seymour, while his family waited for the Northeast Side home to formally go through probate, delaying the project for a few months. He made excuses about why he hadn't begun the work yet. Elizondo played a starring role in a pair of defenders investigations. They exposed that shortly after the convicted thief walked out of the Bear County Jail in 2019, Carlos began using his middle name, Rene, meaning would-be customers, to search whether Rene Elizondo had a history of ripping people off, would not find anything online. Even though Elizondo told clients last fall that after much prayer and with a heavy heart, he had decided to close down his business, it appears he made an exception for Seymour. He gets paid in three segments. Who agreed to fork over an additional 2,500 bucks this winter to cover a rise in the cost of materials. All right, so we're here. But like we've seen time and time again with Elizondo, months after he cashed checks from the family worth more than $6,800, all they have to show for it are some four by fours in concrete and now not even the small chain link fence they had before. I have your best interest at heart. Elizondo now providing one excuse after another for why he can't complete the work, including this claim last week that someone stole his equipment. I have stuff in my backyard that I don't want people to be able to walk off the street and grab. San Antonio police investigators opened a theft case against Elizondo April 14th that rises to the felony level because of how much money he accepted for the job. 
But any theft case against Elizondo at this point, regardless of dollar amount, would be a felony because he has more than two theft convictions on his criminal record. Justice for Elizondo's latest victims has been slow going. Seymour's is one of at least four recent theft investigations of Elizondo in the greater San Antonio area. Two remain open, according to law enforcement officials. Another, in the city of Schertz, was closed in late November when Elizondo finally reimbursed the victim after bouncing two checks written to her. They haven't even marked where the posts go. For Seymour, each passing day brings him closer to the realization that he will likely never see that money again, that Elizondo took the checks with the intention of not completing the work. Well, I started getting angry because it was like, okay, this, this guy is, you know, scamming me. For the Defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Elizondo acknowledged to the Defenders via email that he still occasionally does fencing work and has at times reimbursed customers who learn about his criminal history after hiring him. He signed the email, Carlos. All right, grab a pen and paper or jot this down on your phone in the notes. San Antonio Police Department and Bear County Sheriff's Office have both provided numbers for people to call to report thefts they believe were committed by Elizondo. That number for SAPD is 210-207. 2813 for BCSO. It is 210-335-6070. For more on Dylan's stories, go to ksat.com. All right, now switching gears back to weather. It's the hot topic. We know this week was rough for some, and then we're still going to, we don't want to put that umbrella away, right, Justin? We do not because uh, showers and even a few storms are developing as we speak. We think the radar will be fairly busy next couple of days, and it's fairly busy right now. Let's start with what we're seeing at this hour. Showers and storms widespread as you get east of our area. Places like Victoria and Houston getting good downpours. There have been some flash flood warnings out in that direction. For us, it's more just isolated stuff at the moment. But we do think the radar will fill in a little bit more as we get later into the morning and into the early afternoon hours. Some showers out west, Rock Springs down the Eagle Pass. You'll notice some showers, Pleasanton, uh, south along I-37, and then there's the heavy rain with showers and storms. Uh, affecting places like Howitzville, though, the, they're kind of on the edge of things here where the rain is pretty heavy. So if you're in Howitzville, we have a pretty good looking storm. Not severe, but it's going to dump quite a bit of rain. Moving up uh, Highway 77 right into town there. Gonzalez, you're getting a good downpour right now. And then uh, Cuero, you're just on the edge of the rain. You may get some showers and storms here within the next few minutes. Goliad just cleared out there, but uh, you got a dose of heavy rain earlier. A little closer look at that uh, line of showers and storms over Goliad. You can see there are some lightning strikes associated there. And then that little cluster trying to move towards Howitzville. Showing quite a bit of lightning strikes. So it's pretty electrical. Here in San Antonio, again, things are quiet for now. And then there's some of those light showers. Rock Springs stretching down to Eagle Pass. That's not going to produce all that much rain. But some of the rainfall estimates from the storms just this morning, we're talking two to three inches. So that's why there is a now a flash flood watch in effect for uh, this area. That does include Bear County, by the way. Comal County, New Braunfels, down to Pleasanton, and then points off to the south and east. Uh, the threat here is two to four inches of rain, some isolated spots up to six inches. And here's what we're thinking. On average, uh, there could be five plus in some localized spots in those areas I just showed you, but two to four inches potentially through Sunday morning here in San Antonio and then lower amounts out west. We're going to get a good dose of rainfall. We'll take it. We just don't want the flooding. And if we get some of those heavier downpours, flooding is certainly a possibility. 67 right now, north northeasterly winds at 15. It's cool. It's going to stay fairly cool, kind of like yesterday, thanks to all of our cloud cover. 67 at Port SA, 63 Bernie Stage, 68 New Braunfels, 67 Uvalde, 70 right now in Gonzales. You can see the clouds are fairly widespread. It's not to say we couldn't see a few peaks of sun today, but I don't think we'll see much. And the forecast calls for a 40% chance of showers and storms through 5 o'clock. Temperature staying in the 70s, northeasterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll pick up the rain chances a little bit tonight, and I think overnight into Monday morning. That's a window where we could see some pretty decent rainfall. So here's a look at the forecast, and this is 4 o'clock. Scattered showers as we go into tonight, midnight. Looks like it'll pick up a little bit. Showers and storms. Don't be surprised if you hear some rumbles of thunder overnight. That'll be the case into Saturday morning as well. And then by midday, uh, we're starting to see some of this move north and east. I think we could see a little bit of clearing Saturday evening, but one thing that will do is maybe lead to a little bit of instability. And as our low moves east, we'll have to watch for a couple strong storms out west coming up tomorrow. 
Uh, we don't want any more severe weather, but I uh, can't rule that out. That would move east and then eventually Sunday morning we get to clear out and Sunday looks much, much better. So 74 today, 40% chance of rain. We're going to call for 80% chance of widespread showers and storms through most of the day tomorrow. Maybe a little bit of clearing late. 73 and then 88 Sunday, 94 Monday before we get another frontal boundary that will kick off some storms on Tuesday. Guys, thank you, Justin. 921. Still ahead on JMSA at 9, the rehab team at Methodist Hospital has been helping a local veteran recover from a broken hip. After the break, the special celebration they put together when he was released from the hospital. Welcome back to 24. Even though he's 100 years old, World War II and Korean War veteran Mr. Johnny Hubert still has a lot of spunk and can usually do everything on his own. But he was forced to slow down after he fell from his truck and broke his hip. The rehab team at Methodist Hospital has been working closely with him on his recovery, and this week they took a break from their busy schedules to give him a touching send off. Johnny Hubert isn't your average 100 year old man. During the day, I was having a ball. I <laughs> bought me a brand new truck and was going everywhere I wanted to go. It was that same zeal for life that got him into painful trouble last month. I was in my garage playing around with him with my truck and doing things I shouldn't be doing <laughs> and made a misstep. The Army First Sergeant broke his right hip and asked to be taken to Methodist Hospital, where he had hip surgery and completed two weeks of intense therapy. He was very determined. He, you ask him to do it and he will do it. He will move, he'll get up, he'll walk, regardless of what challenge you threw to him. He met the challenge and he, he impressed us. So the rehab team at Metropolitan decided they'd give back to the veteran in a special way. We had an honor guard of staff members lining the hallway with little flags and we cheered him on. Patriotic cookies and a challenge coin presented by the hospital CEO were added touches to the surprise Hubert says was unlike any other he had ever received for his service. I never have been in pain like that in my life, you know. Uh, when I came back from overseas, the, 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 the second time, I think I kissed the ground. And, and it was, it was about, that was about to look like that much. And while he's surrounded by good caretakers, Hubert's grandson hopes the community can help in a meaningful way. And I think those prayers and the encouragement that people can give him is the uh, impetus for him to continue to be strong. We're cheering for his recovery. And the first thing Mr. Johnny Hubert wants to do once he's in a better condition is to visit District 2 Senior Center and hang out there with his friends. Oh, we wish him the best as he continues on the road to recovery. Absolutely. Well, there's still a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Scientists set NASA using a telescope at the uh, International Space Station to learn more about stars on the verge of becoming black holes. Katie Blake speaks to a researcher about what they've learned. And the first round of the, of the 2021 NFL draft is now over, and there were a few surprises. David and RJ join us after the break to give us their thoughts. Pro football coverage. Powered What's, by David what is Rolfer. going on in here this morning? <laughs> hey, man, it's Friday. And David Sears is ready to go club, and he says, No. <laughs> I'm going to that yeah. one that closes at four. Yeah, well, not no. in the morning, four <laughs> A little day, daytime, yeah, his, dancing. His dances uh, are no, in celebration of the Dallas Cowboys pick, right, go. David Sears? Yeah, yeah that's it. That's First it. round's over, guys. Yeah. Uh, David and Roger here to break down the, the pick. A very interesting night. Well, first off, mm -hmm. they did it in front of a crowd. Which I was going to say, was, back to normalcy. You know, that was, was great. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Roger Goodell was in his basement last mm -hmm. year. <laughs> yeah. out the they had the lazy boy out there, though. The lazy boy that he used. Out Here we go. Yeah, out yeah. in Cleveland. That was uh, nice. Yeah, and I like the setup, too. Outdoor setup, yeah. so it wasn't so uh, kind of, you know, maybe a little bit uncomfortable. I really like what they did this year with the draft, and uh, we talked about it. Trevor Lawrence uh, went first. Not a big shock there, David. Mm -hmm. No, the, the shock kind of came when you're sitting around waiting and waiting and waiting. The good news is the first round only lasts 10 minutes for each pick rather than mm -hmm. that 15 that used to last. So the Cowboys get on the clock and they're ready to make their move and you're thinking who they're going to get and they make a trade. 
But the reason they made the trade was because the Denver Broncos picked the guy they wanted yeah, yeah. the pick ahead of the Cowboys. So the Cowboys said, well, let's just get out of this uh, – 10th pick and move down to the 12th Yeah, pick. well, Carolina and then Denver basically threw some major curveballs at the Cowboys because they took both cornerbacks that were projected to go with Dallas. Odd that they traded with the Eagles, though. They, uh, you never, you rarely see this. An in-division trade, I was like, what is going on? Why are the Cowboys doing this? This is like uh, sacrilegious here that they're doing this with the Well, we talked about it. Devontae Smith was going to be okay. either the Giants mm -hmm. or the Eagle. He was going to be one of those with one of those two teams, so it, it didn't really matter that they traded. I think they actually, if you reverse that, the Cowboys actually took advantage of the Eagles. They did because they yes. moved down because the guy that they wanted, the two guys they wanted, were already gone. Number one, number two, they picked up another pick mm -hmm. in the third round mm -hmm. this year, and Lord knows they need a lot of help on defense and some help on offense, so they need a lot of picks to maybe fill some holes. Yeah, so and this was they the guy got advantage, took advantage of the Eagles. Uh, yeah, I think definitely Dallas gets sort of the better end of that deal because they get one of the better defenders, uh, of course, in the uh, college game. Now, Micah Parsons, he's out of Penn State, actually did not play last year. He's one no. of the guys that sat out due to uh, the COVID rules in, uh, in college football. But uh, a, a dynamic playmaker, uh, one of the better uh, defenders, as we were saying, and uh, he definitely feels a need because that defense was awful last year. So, so and the course, defense needed all the help that yeah. they could get. And, of course, he's excited <laughs> about being in Dallas. Here he is. I got a mastermind head coach, Dan Quinn, uh, uh, defense coordinator, Dan Quinn. Great person I can learn from. I got great linebackers there I can lean on. So uh, I'm going to be in a competitive environment, and I'm going to have to earn mine. So I'm super excited to get there and add on to the tradition of great linebackers that come through the Cowboys. Yeah, great linebackers mm -hmm. through the Cowboys from Penn State. Sean Lee was from Penn State, yep. and he retired earlier, uh, earlier, like, was it last week he retired? Yeah, last week. It week? was like the earlier this week. Yeah, it. yeah. So. And, uh, and we talked about also Jalen Smith. Uh, who knows? Jalen yeah. kind of had a, had a down year last year, and then uh, Leighton Vanderish has been to hurt I, a lot. Now, so. now we're getting somewhere with some linebackers. Yes. Get a good, a good, <laughs> good backup, and, and, we're, and we're getting somewhere. So now the Cowboys have one pick in the second round, and then they've got three because they added that one in that trade with Philadelphia. So they got three in the third round. And, oh, gee, the Texans finally get to do something. <laughs> Yeah, we forgot about the uh, the Houston <laughs> Texans there. Yeah. Um, so we'll wow. see, it'll be interesting to see if the Texans maybe try and move up or try to do something. But, uh, yeah, they're stuck all the way in the third round. The so. uh, Coach O'Brien Memorial third-round pick. There Ooh. we go. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that hurts. But <laughs> so far, so good for the Cowboys. Yeah, I, I like the pick overall. Yeah. And it was a little odd to me, the trade at first. But overall, it's a pretty good job by the Cowboys. All right, so uh, in the meantime... The Spurs are going to play tonight. They're in two baskets. Get ready to take up the Celtics, and they wrap up the four-game road trip tonight in Boston. And they're coming off that loss mm -hmm. the other night. Against the Heat. Yeah, yeah they, got, they got scorched by the Heat. Yeah, really they are. They're in the middle of a. Uh, <laughs> they're in the middle of a, a pretty rough stretch here against Ooh. the Celtics, and then they have back-to-back uh, -back games against Utah coming up. So if they could That's win this cool. one, mm. then uh, I think that they can hold on to that uh, maybe ninth or tenth position. Yep. So uh, it's a big game here for the Spurs. Uh, we talked about it the other day. I don't think I don't think there's a chance that they'll fall out of the tenth spot and into the 11th spot. So they're, so they're going to be in one of those play-in games, I think. But they got to yeah. keep uh, they gotta, they gotta win there. a few more to make sure that We've happens. got a 6.30 tip tonight. So yeah. that's that's good for us here in the Central Time Zone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it fits with David's schedule, right? We're talking about <laughs> it's, going to it's the club at 4 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> game over bedtime. Uh, game, milk and cookies, bedtime. That's there right. There we go. Love yeah. that. Go, Spurs, go. <laughs> RJ, David, thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Let's go outside with live cam yeah. and back to Justin Horn, who's got an eye on the sky. and. Uh, well, I tell you what, we feast or famine around here. We talk about this all the time as far as weather patterns and rainfall. And now it looks like the drought buster has finally arrived. It has done a lot to help us with our drought. I think we may emerge out of the drought, at least briefly, as, uh, once we get through the weekend, because we will have received quite a bit of rain, it looks like. Let's go to the radar, and you can see where the rain is right now. We've got a good swath of rain down across our coastal county, stretching from Victoria over to Quero, and as you get towards Houston area. But we are seeing some new development uh, south of San Antonio, Wilson County around Poth, uh, near Falls City, seeing some showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder mixed in there, and then some heavier rain also around Howitzville. Uh, that storm is moving right into Howitzville as we speak. Not severe, but there are some lightning strikes, some really heavy rain with this as it moves off to the north and east. You could get a quick inch out of this storm. And looking at some of the rainfall rates, uh, they've been up close to six inches per hour in some cases. So 
Uh, these are good, good rainmakers, and we're going to see more of this, I think, develop uh, within our area uh, throughout the day, and especially as we get into tonight and early tomorrow. So flash flood watch has been issued for San Antonio and points off to the south and east. The threats would be rainfall two to four inches, some isolated spots up to six inches. And looking at the forecast for today, we'll keep it a 40% chance rain here in San Antonio, but we're going to bring those chances up tonight, 60% chance at 8 o'clock. And tomorrow, we're talking about an 80% chance of showers or storms, especially during the morning time. We'll take a closer look at that and a look ahead to Sunday as well, coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Roads uh, look great right now. It's about 24 hours for now that's going to be the problem. But we're going to keep it covered all weekend right here on KSAT. 937 scientists at NASA always trying to learn more about outer space. Thanks to observations from NASA, from a NASA telescope, astronomers are now closer to understanding one of the hardest to reach places in the universe, the inner core of a star on the verge of becoming a black hole. Katie Blake joins us in studio now to talk about a NASA scientist or actually chatted with a NASA scientist about it. Take it away, Katie. We are going straight to the source here. I get really excited to talk anything that has to do with NASA outer space, and we are going to the experts this morning. This telescope is called NICER, N-I-C-E-R, and it is at the International Space Station right now. Scientists use it to study neutron stars and objects that are about to collapse into black holes. NICER team member Paul Ray joins us live right now from Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Great to speak with you live here on GMSA at 9. We've got a few questions for you. First, what is the difference between a black hole and a neutron star? Sure, nice to be here. Yeah, the neutron stars and black holes are both collapsed stars that were formed uh, when really massive stars, much more massive than our sun, collapse. The most massive stars collapse all the way down to black holes because no force can impede their collapse. They collapse down to a point and they are enshrouded by an event horizon from which nothing, not even light, can escape. But neutron stars are from stars that are a little bit less massive. They collapse down until Basically, the atoms are the neutrons that are, make up atoms are crunched one up against each other like a giant atomic nucleus. They're about the size of a city, but they weigh more than our sun. And so just a teaspoon of them would weigh as much as Mount Everest. Wow. So why is it important that we study these neutron stars, learn more about them? Yeah, we're trying to understand them because they present one of the most extreme environments that we can see in the universe. They're extremely dense. They have super strong magnetic fields. They have these conditions that we can never create in a terrestrial laboratory. And with their densities at the core being twice that of a nucleus, there's physics that might go on there that we don't fully understand. And they give us a way to probe that. Uh, and that's what, so we're trying to understand that by looking at how squeezable those neutron stars are. So I'm sure that's a big reason why the telescope NICER is on the International Space Station right now, right? Yeah, so we uh, neutron stars don't emit much light, and we have so we see them in the X-ray band. Uh, and so in order to see X-rays, you have to go above the Earth's atmosphere, because thankfully for us, X-rays don't make it through the atmosphere. So we put NICER on the space station, where we have uh, abundant communication and power resources. It's a great place to be for our telescope. And from that vantage point, we can collect x-rays from all sorts of neutron stars and other objects in the sky. So what is next for this telescope NICER up there on the space station? Yeah, NICER is going to keep observing the primary sources, which are these neutron stars. But also, it, about half the time is given away to anyone in the world that wants to propose. It's an open telescope, and so it observes black holes and a variety of other exciting objects in the sky that emit x-rays. I know there's a lot of fascination around black holes there. They're very cool, awesome that we're learning even more about them and the neutron stars as well. So where can our viewers go to learn more about neutron stars and NICER, the telescope? Yeah, so definitely online. You can go to nasa.gov slash NICER, and there's a, a host of uh, really amazing videos and animations you can check out about the neutron stars and black holes. And if you just follow at NASA Universe on Twitter or other social media, you'll be able to keep up with things as they come in. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time this morning, Paul. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it. You've taught us all a lot here in a very short amount of time. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Paul Ray, Katie Blake, thank you guys. I would make a joke about uh, astronomy, but I don't think we have space in the show. <laughs> That's all her. That's all her. That was well the joke, done. Oriana. Well played. That was <laughs> <laughs> Funny stuff. Did Oriana put you up to that? I have one more. I have one more. Okay. Um, why are astronauts so good at social distancing? Why? They like their space. That was <laughs>
Not bad. Future dad jokes. Mic. 942, <laughs> about 68 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And as we head to break, a quick look at radar. More rain is expected today and tomorrow here in San Antonio. Justin Horn times out the showers for us next. 945, welcome back. Check this out. A 12-year-old from North Carolina finished four years worth of school in a 12-month period. Mike Wimmer completed his junior and senior years of high school and a two-year associate's degree. Now he's preparing to graduate from high school and community college at the same time. That wasn't enough. He's also the valedictorian of his high school class. Ooh, as for what's next, Wimmer is considering job options in and out of the U.S., additional schooling, or even a fellowship that would allow him to focus on his startup. 12 years old. Wow. Imagine what's to come for that kid. I'm a, I'm a little intimidated. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm not even going to talk about my schooling. <laughs> Let's bring Justin back in right now. And uh, obviously you have a lot on your plate this weekend. We all do. We know the yeah. ground is still fairly saturated from this week's storms. Hey, we want to watch those areas that did get quite a bit of rain uh, last couple nights. And then we're also going to be watching areas to the south and east of San Antonio where I think we could see some pretty big rainfall totals. So the flood threat is there. Uh, and that's something we'll have to watch through about Saturday night and then things will clear out on Sunday. I want to look at the aquifer because this is a big deal. It's up 1.2 feet today, 655.3, the new number. But since earlier this week, we're up about six feet. That's that's big time. That's really going to help us. Now, we're still technically in stage two. We may not come out of it for a while because they're going to look at this and see if uh, if it's going to hold. But we're headed in the right direction, that's for sure. And looking at the live radar, uh, we do have some areas of showers and storms trying to develop now just south and east of town in Wilson County, seeing some flare ups here. Nothing severe, but you could see some lightning strikes where you see some of these white lines that indicates where we are seeing some lightning strikes right along I-10 north of Gonzales, seeing a little bit of activity. And let's zoom in a little bit closer to what we're seeing down here around Poth and Falls City. Uh, just a little area of rain, maybe some heavier downpours mixed in there just uh, uh, west of Poth there. And it doesn't seem to be working its way towards San Antonio. So for the moment, San Antonio is still staying fairly dry. A little closer look at the storm that moved through Howitzville, almost through town now, but quite a few lightning strikes, pretty electrical. And it's putting down some good rain. This is going to be the case with all of these showers and storms that develop here over the next day or so. Rainfall rates, I did see some numbers as high as six inches, but this looks like it's more on the line of one to two inches per hour. And obviously it's not going to sit over you for an hour, so you're not going to get that much rain, but a quick half inch maybe up to an inch in some spots with some of these heavier downpours. You can see that today. Uh, let's uh, go look at the flash flood watch, and that is in effect until 7 p.m. tomorrow. Does include Bear County, does include New Braunfels, down to Pleasanton, and then off to the south and east, because we think this is where the heaviest of the rain will fall, especially today. Uh, isolated totals, or numbers two to four inches, isolated totals six inches. Uh, with the rain and that's on um, in addition to what we have already seen obviously the last couple days and in general we're thinking two to four inches here around San Antonio through tomorrow night through Sunday morning slightly lower totals out west and then the, the bigger numbers where that flash flood watch is at the moment uh, visible satellite picture shows we got a lot of cloud cover that's not really going anywhere so they keep temperatures cooler today and our upper level lows kind of stuck out over West Texas stays there today. It's not until Sunday that it finally starts to move out of here. Right now, cloudy skies here in San Antonio, 67 degrees. North northeast really winds at 15, gusting to 25. 63 Bernie Stage, 65 Boulevard, 69 in New Braunfels, 70 down there in Pleasanton, and still 59 in Rock Springs. So just like yesterday, it's going to be a coolish type day. 40% chance of rain across the board until we get into tonight. We'll start to bring chances up a little bit, and here's why. 4 o'clock, still scattered showers and storms, but look what happens overnight. We start to get things a little more widespread. We start to see some thunderstorms mixed in there, and then you'll get some heavier downpours through 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, even noontime, still seeing some showers and some downpours. Now, we may get a little bit of a break as we get into tomorrow evening, but if that happens and we get some instability out west, we could see some stronger storms try to work their way east, and that model's hinting at this idea. We'll keep a close eye on that, but that could produce some more heavy rain Saturday night before this all clears out Sunday morning. And Sunday's going to be a nice day, so if you have plans this weekend, Sunday's your day. But 40% chance of showers today, 80% chance tonight, 
into much of the day tomorrow. We'll watch for some of those storms Saturday evening and then clearing out Sunday 94 Monday 20% chance of rain on Tuesday guys. Thank you, Justin. It's about 10 till 7, about 68 degrees. We'll be right back with more. Good morning. Hey, guys. Coming up on live, Mila Kunis talks about her movie, Four Good Days. Plus a performance from Callista Clark. We'll see you soon here on LIVE. Welcome back. It's 953. Let's take a look out at Transguide at 410 and Callahan Road. Roads are dry. No accidents in that area so far. Traffic flowing well. It is pretty quiet right now, as you just saw. We will see some scattered showers and storms today. The, the best chance will be overnight into early on Saturday. 80% chance of showers and storms. Flash flood watch in effect. We'll watch for some flooding and spots here around the area. Thank you, Justin. Looking ahead to the weekend, don't forget tomorrow is election day here in San Antonio. Voters will decide the mayoral race, 10 council seats, and the fate of two propositions. Polls are open tomorrow from 7 in the morning to 7 at night. For everything you need to know before you vote, just go to ksat.com. VIA is making it easier for voters to get to the polls. They're offering free rides to polling locations. All you have to do to get a free ride is present a valid, valid voter registration card to the bus or van operator. Then you'll be dropped off at the nearest polling location. And a Barbie themed pop up truck stopping in San Antonio tomorrow. The Barbie truck loaded with 90s themed apparel and accessories. Oh, I want to be there. You can find the Barbie mm -hmm. pop-up truck at the shops at La Cantera from 10 tomorrow morning until 7 p.m. For more information on the items you can buy, head over to ksat.com. We want to tell you about a benefit that's taking place this weekend up in Bernie. Yeah, it's with the Vosbo. We've done a story with them. It's the veteran-owned um, organization. It's a nonprofit for veterans, and they really work as a chamber of commerce, and they've been working on this event, and it's going to benefit the DPS trooper, Chad Walker, who was shot and killed. Uh, we're hearing that 100% of every dollar of the proceeds is going to Officer Walker's family this weekend. There's going to be dozens of raffle prizes benefiting the event, door prizes. Uh, the, there is an entry fee for, uh, to go to the event. Yeah, $25 and then 10 for kids. Uh, there's going to be live music. It's going to be an all day event. And then the good thing is that we know that I 10 over there in the Bernie area is going to be open, open. now because of the rain that is expected. So that's a good sign. That's right. It's going to uh, start, uh, it goes 12 to 5 on Sunday with a special moment of silence taps and the national anthem starting at 1 p.m. But a lot of local businesses have contributed to this Operation Walker Benefits taking place Sunday. It's May 2nd in Bernie, and that is happening at the, I wrote it down. Uh, Padres Hill Country Cocina. Yes, at 201, 209 Loman Street, which is just off North Main near Johns Road in Bernie on Sunday. Y'all have a good weekend. Thank you.